Hello. So as most of you know, I'm currently chasing my dream of becoming a game developer as a full-time college student. Now, the funny thing about being a game developer is you have to actually make games. Obviously, making games is really difficult, and as a college student, I have very limited time and very limited money. In this video, I wanted to give you a glimpse into what it's like being a college student teaming up with his roommate to make a video game while balancing all of the things that college life brings. So here's how my college roommate and I made our first 3D game in Godot in just a few weeks. When my roommates and I got back to college, we decided that we wanted to team up to make a game together. We came up with an idea that we thought was really cool and something that we could accomplish in just a few months. I still like the idea and I hope we can tackle it at some point in the future, but we quickly realized that we weren't actually making any progress. The problem is we all have some game development experience, but we're all learning new things at the same time. I have experience making 2D games, but this is my first time doing 3D modeling and animation. My roommate Adam has experience with Unreal Engine, but we're learning Godot for this game project. So the scope of our idea was just bigger than what we were ready for. So that got me thinking, I really just want to finish a game. There's a lot of power that comes as a game developer from just finishing a game and getting through the entire process. So what if we made a game that was so small it was almost impossible not to finish? Something that we could potentially even knock out in one week. That way we could get experience with the entire game development pipeline, from ideation to publishing the game on itch.io. I realized we could probably make a simple infinite runner pretty quickly, so we decided to do that. So that brings us to day one of this game making challenge. It's a pretty chilly Wednesday over here. I'm just grabbing a bite to eat between classes. Um, the big problem that we're having right now is it's all of our first time kind of doing this pipeline. So I want to do a game that's so small, it's almost impossible not to finish, which is how I came upon this idea of a little guy that's on top of a barrel. You just move back and forth, avoiding obstacles. It's so simple. It's like, how could you not finish that game? But we're gonna find out if we even can. Now before I could get started on the game, I had to go to all my classes. I actually had a lot of classes that day, but it was a super nice day out, so I always appreciate that. Once I got home, I hit the gym, absolutely vaporized some pasta, and I did a little bit of homework. After finishing that homework, I got to work on the animation prototype. Now I've never actually done the full pipeline from Blender to Godot, so I needed to test it with a super simple model with just two bones. I learned how to use the non-linear action editor to prepare animations for export, and I got him into Godot, which probably doesn't seem like a very big deal, but I'm pretty hyped about it. So, with all that, I was pretty happy with the progress for the day. Now, real quick, speaking from experience, it's really difficult to know what you want to do with your entire life during the short time that you're at college. There's this kind of expectation that you'll just know what you want to do, and lots of people feel like they get pushed into doing something that they're not actually interested in. If you're currently trying to decide what you want to do for college, or you've always wanted to get into the game development industry but feel like it's too late, there's this really cool opportunity with today's sponsor, Southern New Hampshire University. SNHU offers online degrees in game development, so no matter where you are, you can get a degree in game development. Whether you're interested in making art for video games or doing the programming, they've got a degree for both. In the game art and development program, you'll get to participate in courses like 3D art and design, creature design, character animation, and more. Then in the game programming and development degree, you'll get into classes like scripting for games, interactive animation, digital game development, and digital graphic design for the web. It's also radically affordable. Their online tuition rates are some of the lowest in the nation. Getting into the game development industry is usually pretty difficult. Getting a formal education from SNHU is an awesome opportunity to learn the ins and outs of game development from faculty with real-world experience, so you'll have opportunities to connect with people in the industry. And SNHU will be there to help you in the job hunt even after you graduate. There's no set class times which allows you to work whenever and wherever you want. So this is a really cool opportunity for anyone who's interested in getting into game development. To get more information, click the link in the description or go to snhu.edu slash jerbob and learn how you can get started with a game design and development degree. Good morning, it is November now, and I didn't actually get anything done yesterday, so that's awesome. This morning I had a little bit of extra time, on Friday mornings I usually have a little bit of free time before classes, and so I started modeling the character. I ended up kind of redesigning what I want him to look like. I just didn't want to have to actually like model the entire body of the character, so I ended up deciding to just do like a do with the legs, um, and then I just made this little guy, I don't know what it is, but so here's what we're working with. It's gonna be great. Just trust the process. 
So I have to run to class now, but this afternoon I'll have a little bit more free time. I'm gonna finish modeling him, do the texture painting, and probably rig him, and get ready to start doing just the basic animation that I can toss into Godot. So, I'll see you there. After getting done with all my classes for the day, I actually got a ton of work done. I texture painted the character, and I really like the way he's looking. Adam got a prototype done in Godot with a scrolling texture for the area that the player can run on. So things are kind of starting to come together, which is really exciting. On Saturday, I completely forgot to record any footage, but I did the weight painting and rigging for the character so I could start working on its animation. Thanks to some of your comments on the shorts that I've put out, I realized that for simple characters like this, you can assign the weight with empty groups and use vertex groups to determine how the character moves. So the weight painting process this time around was a lot easier than it sometimes can be. The last thing I did on Saturday was attempt to set up inverse kinematics, which was a little bit confusing and I didn't get it all the way figured out for this rig. It was a beautiful Sunday, and we got some great stuff done on the game. Adam made a cell shader in Godot. He's got a good amount of experience doing shaders in Unreal Engine, so he had to learn how to do it in Godot, but it looks great. I finished up the rig, without inverse kinematics, sadly, but that wasn't too important, and made the main animation of the player rolling on the barrel. It was a surprisingly hard animation to figure out. I didn't have any barrels to roll down a hill for reference, so it took me like six attempts, but I finally wrapped my head around it, and once I added some squash and stretch and exaggerated the movements a little bit, it looked really nice. Alright, we're back and it's Monday again. The weekend was super good. We got a bunch of stuff done. So all that's left to do is import the character into Godot. I need to make some obstacles in Blender today that will move up the screen. You have to avoid them as well as make a scrolling texture that will look like the ground's moving up at you. And then I'll probably also try to make some UI elements just so that game looks nice, but we'll see how much time I end up having tonight. I'm gonna go get a workout in. I'll be back in a sec. I only ended up having time to model the stump and the rock, which are obstacles that you'll have to avoid. But for the minimum viable product, that's probably all that we're going to add. What is the minimum viable product, you may ask? Basically, to fight against the scope of the game getting too big, we decided to define exactly what we need for the game to work. Really, all we needed on a fundamental level was for the player to be able to move back and forth across the screen with obstacles moving up the screen. And then obviously the ability to die and something to keep track of your score. We want to add more things in the future, but we decided that this was the bare necessity to get the game out. So Adam and I chatted about that for a while, as well as some logistics and how we want the game to look. How's it going? I'm joining you on uh, Tuesday morning. It's snowing right now, so that's pretty exciting. It's, it's kind of cold today. So me and Adam have been talking a lot recently about like what are the things that we need to get the game released, hopefully this week. That's the goal that we have for ourselves. And then we'd love to continue to add and expand the game in the future. We're thinking about focusing it on maybe being a mobile game and even trying our hand at launching it on the Google Play Store. So that's kind of like longer term. But for this week, we just want to get like something out on itch.io so that we have a game that we made in a week. So that means that I need to do some more art. I have to do a couple more models for um, different environment obstacles and things. And then I also need to do some UI art. I've still got a good amount of work cut out for me today, but I'm pretty optimistic that I'll be able to get some good stuff done. So so I'm excited for what we've got going. I need to run to class, I'm gonna be late, so I'll catch up with you later. After class, I did a lot of work on the art. I drew up a really basic concept of what the game might look like on mobile with like a nine to 16 screen ratio, and I made a simple scrolling background texture and some UI art elements. And then later at night, I made a low poly tree model. We also decided for the minimum viable product, we wanted to add coins so there was some way to increment your score and track progress. So I modeled a quick coin in Blender. On Wednesdays, I'm usually super busy with classes, but we had some time that night to work on the game together. With our combined knowledge, we were able to get the animations working in-game. We had one of our roommates come test the movement to see how it feels. And then later, Adam added the obstacle generation, and with all the obstacles and animations, it's really starting to come together. Still got some bugs to work out, but progress is going great. 
All right, it's Thursday morning and we actually got some really good stuff done on the game last night. I don't expect that I'm gonna have any time to work on the game today. I'm like super busy with a bunch of different tests and classes and things, but we're in a really good place. It's pretty exciting seeing everything come together. It's an enjoyable game to play, which is which is good. Like I just, I found myself just playing it for like 20 minutes straight, even though there's a lot of bugs and there's not even collisions yet. It's pretty fun. So that's promising. We'll see if anything ends up getting done today, but I just need to grind on school today. So that's gonna be my main focus. Anyway, Anyways. And grind, I did. Dude, midterms came out of nowhere and I got slammed for like the entirety of Thursday and Friday, which means I basically got nothing done. That really sucked because I was hoping to make some good progress on the game. But that's just kind of how it is when you're doing game dev as a hobby. Sometimes other things come along in life that are objectively more important and game dev just has to take the back burner. We got some decent work done on the game over the weekend though. Most of the art is done now, so Adam is hard at work putting everything into the game. I decided to work on some sound design and I opened up my old game files from when I was working on Coco the Last League. I made some sound effects for the rolling barrel and used a couple old sound effects for things like picking up coins to give a little bit more life to the game. I also asked on my Discord server if anyone was wanting to make music for the game, and this guy named Jestro came to the rescue. Even with only a super rudimentary video of what the video game was going to look like, he made a song that fits the vibe of the game perfectly. Huge shout out to Jestro for helping out. Speaking of the Discord, I'm building a community where creative people can come together and collaborate and get feedback and share their work. If you're a creator of any kind and want to be part of a community of like-minded people, be sure to click on the link in the description and join the Discord. With music and sound effects and obstacles in the game, things were really starting to come together. There were a couple of visual bugs we're working out, but I'm really happy with where we're at. During the next week or so, I didn't record as much footage. The game took a little bit longer than expected, but in a way that's kind of what we were expecting. Obviously, making video games takes a long time, and since we planned to initially make the game in one week, having it take a few weeks is pretty normal. During that time, we posted a YouTube short and got some pretty good feedback on some visual things. Turns out it's kind of hard to see the player through the trees, so Adam made this sick shader where you can see the player behind the trees. We liked how the trees added depth, but they were kind of too big and blocked the player too much, so we experimented with a new type of tree for more visual clarity. And then Adam also added screen wrapping so the player goes to the other side of the level instead of just falling off infinitely into the void. So the day that I'm recording this video, we're still working on the game, fixing some bugs and improving the visual style. But we're planning to release the game on itch.io at the same time that this video goes live. So if you're watching this, the game is out now. Now keep in mind that this is a very early version of the game. We really tried to limit the scope so that we can make the game as quickly as possible. That way we can get some playtesting feedback. So we'd appreciate it if you went and played the game on itch.io. The link is in the description. Then come back and leave a comment telling us what you think. We plan to continue developing this game for a while and fleshing out the concepts before moving on to another small game. Choosing to work on a small game project was probably the best decision we could have made. On the Jabob channel, we finish games. And that's like one of the most difficult things to do. So I plan to continue developing game projects with Adam so that we can get some solid game dev experience under our belts. I have to say, it feels really good to just be making video games again. As I've spent time learning Blender, I've just been thinking about it and practicing, but now we're actually doing something again. Teaming up with Adam has been awesome. It's been super fun just bouncing ideas off of each other and learning together. Slowly but surely, the dream of making an indie game studio is coming together. I appreciate y'all for watching, and I'd love if you gave me some feedback on this new style of video. If you'd like to see more of my journey learning Blender for game development, I showed the entire process in my last video right here. Make sure to go watch that next. I'll catch you in the next one.